Hi, everyone. Um, um, it's great to be here. Thank you to the Cartier Foundation and to World Around. Um, I wanted to talk about um, obsolescence, but also about this radical repair that's needed in relationships in general. The relationships with our habitat, our planet, and the relationships with each other. Um, and, and a lot of the work that I'll show um, is concerned with these things. Um, I come from Chicago. It had a very famous plan in 1909 by Daniel Burnham and, and Bennett um, to lay out the um, organization for this big city on the lakes. The lakes, the Great Lakes, are um, one of the, it is the largest freshwater ecosystem in the entire world, and it actually has about 21% of all fresh surface water on the planet right here. And that's why um, industry located there. So I've been fascinated with this overlay of the, um, the freshwater and the industrial history of the place where I started my architecture firm. Um, what happened over the time was that this land became very polluted, so the big dots are kind of these toxic um, Superfund sites, and became known as the Rust Belt, so really where all the steel production was coming from. Um, and you have um, this kind of unnatural landscapes uh, with the background, it's not a hill, it's actually a landfill, uh, dumping and things like that. But you get a mixture of this overlay with natural systems because of the lakes. So I've been really interested in um, the fact that the city is on a, a migratory flyway. So it's called the Mississippi Flyway, and you get birds um, traveling miles and miles and miles coming through the city twice a year. The problem is, though, that with new buildings, all of our new architecture, we're putting um, these other species at risk that are sharing our cities with us. Um, in one day during migration, uh, these are birds that were collected after colliding with window glass that they cannot see. So I've been really interested in and in working on this problem for about 20 years, um, and there's a lot of solutions to that. Um, but I think the main point I really want to say here is that um, to radically repair relationships with nature, uh, we need to be nurturing and become allies in a certain way with these other species that we share our cities with. Um, and in that process of becoming allies, we actually repair our relationships with each other. Then that's uh, really exciting when it starts to happen. So um, we've been developing solutions for this from an architectural standpoint, like screens and fritted glass and many things that you can do. Um, and some of the projects that, every project kind of takes this on in its own way. Um, this is the Writer's Theater project, uh, which has a kind of canopy walk, and people can uh, walk out there at intermission, and as they walk around in this canopy walk, you can see that the, the screen of the wood is helping to reduce um, impacts with glass, but also if you look at the glass itself, there's a small dot pattern on there uh, that, that also works really well for reducing bird strikes. So as we welcome more um, nature into our cities, we have to really think about these things of everyone that we share the city with. So when I first came to Chicago, it was true that they were still dumping sewage into uh, the Chicago River, partially treated sewage. Um, and this you have this uh, context of um, bad water quality, um, flooded basements, um, uh, now with climate change, flash storms, rain bombs, invasive species making their way up to that wonderful ecosystem in the lakes. So the potential of all those problems, I think, is really like how to reinvent this post-industrial landscape. Uh, so one of the pro projects that I uh, worked on with our team was developing a book to help the public become aware of what was going on with the waterway and how to renew it. And so what we provided in the book was some solutions, some images of what it might look like if we had a new kind of relationship with the water. Um, and we suggested these steps of how to get there. 
And number one step was to give people access to the water. And the whole idea of that is to make, uh, make it possible for people to be allies uh, with us toward and allies with the river itself. Um, so that started to work. We built um, this boathouse along the river, which gives access to youth to use the river and adults as a, as a boathouse and row, um, a rowing center. And it really had caught on. But the point is really, too, that you need architecture to, to help do this and make people excited to get there. It can't just be, um, you know, it needs to be a good piece of architecture that's um, welcoming people to the riverfront. Um, and that's what gets it started. So it's also a, a community center. It's a place where students do homework after school. So I bring all this up because I think it's really important to um, support these relationships between people and their environment. So these first projects on a kind of bigger scale uh, really work to do that and actually radically change policy. So for example, after these boathouses started being built, the city voted uh, to start to regulate that sewer water and, and then um, really improve the water quality. And then this whole like army of supporters for the river after they started using it, this is 10 years in, in 2023, it's a, a completely different um, changed uh, relationship with this waterway. Um, and it's, it's really moved it into a new phase. So those are the things that we try to do with connecting people to their environment. Um, another project where we did that was this old uh, kind of urban pond that was um, designed as a kind of picturesque pond. So it's an idea about nature that is um, a constructed idea. It's man against nature. And it, it was kind of run down, so we took the opportunity um, when they asked me to design um, a pavilion there. Um, instead of doing that, we proposed redoing the pond into a habitat. And so really studied the water quality um, and, and made big progress on, on redefining this place and making it a real um, vibrant uh, place where animals come to be. <laughs> They're attracted to it. Um, it's right within the, the, the Lincoln Park Zoo. So this is like, I always say it's like a zoo without cages where animals voluntarily come. Um, but it's also for people. And here we see the first urban wildlife um, groups um, that, that were formed after this project was made that are now creating a whole new generation of stewards of watersheds. Um, and, and we can see how this is attracted. These are night cams that we have in the, at the Lincoln Park uh, Zoo Nature Boardwalk. And, I mean, even large-scale mammals are coming to this place, which is pretty exciting to me. And then people um, um, are also documenting these species. So turtles on the left, birds on the right. There's a real um, a new kind of developed relationship with this natural environment. And we did design a pavilion, after all. It's actually place people is the most popular place to get married in Chicago. Um, but it is a place where, so relationships between people um, also take place. Um, spontaneously, um, other events started showing up in this. It's a very vibrant, very rich, uh, biodiverse landscape in the city. Um, and um, I just wanted to also mention that it's really important to in, have people involved in this process uh, in the design phase. This is the Mississippi River, the great Mississippi River. It's, it's an incredible place. Uh, we worked with uh, local um, community members and, and even high school students during the design process to get their input. And I think that really built a lot of allies for this project. Um, as it went forward, um, this was the site before. It's kind of just a dike that is a piece of infrastructure. Um, but as we move forward, we um, um, were able to get everybody to support this project. Um, this just opened in Labor Day. So it's a place for people. Um, the last two projects I just want to show, shifting to the architectural scale, um, is 
this idea of, of renewing and, and saving as much capacity in our buildings as we can. As we know, each building represents a chunk of carbon. Um, and so I've been interested in trying to find new ways to describe um, ways of intervening with, um, with um, old buildings. This is a third century mosaic representing grafting. So it's about um, people working together with nature to get tastier fruit, to resist diseases. There, it's always been a relationship with nature, um, and I think that's what we need to highlight. So I have a book that's going to come out that's about um, the art of architectural grafting. Um, in that book, um, a couple of projects like this Museum of Fine Arts in Arkansas are featured. Um, it's a con so far, I've had a few of these projects where um, people want to tear down um, a building like this. It's been added on over time. It's very confusing. Um, eight different additions, eight different mechanical systems, eight different structures. Um, and what we did here was to um, try to find a way to intervene and make this thing work better and add capacity to it. So it's a kind of uh, spine that comes down the middle of the building, revealing the original 1934 building. Um, and so it's kind of just reinventing this building that really did not have a lot of personality, I would say. It was very closed from the outside and kind of trying to pull out the highlights of how it could be a new museum, art school, and theater um, school. And so um, all of the structure um, is working very closely with what's already there. I always tell students you have to kind of fall in love with the existing building, even if it's ugly, uh, if you want to use it and, and bring new capacity to it. And it's very fun to kind of bring new life to a building like this. This is that looking down the spine of the building and, and really um, you can see how light and how it connects now to the area around it and to the park around it. And then <clears throat> finally, um, my last project to share is the Gilder Center, which is at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, and it's um, a very famous um, institution in New York, which is a natural history museum um, right on Central Park right, and, and, and very close to the park. The yellow dot is where they asked us to uh, put a new wing. And you know, to start this project, we really had to think about how people feel, how, what do people feel about nature, and why is that important now? And I think it really is important. Number one is, in the States, we have, you know, there are people that don't even believe in climate change. So we, we have a lot of education to do. But um, it, I feel that sometimes it's because we have this separation between people and nature. So this project graphs into the existing building, as you can see in the darker plan there, to connect in with its um, existing flows and to make it more fluid how people can move through the building and really start to um, explore and discover what they think is interesting. So as a floor plan, um, it's, it's working with structure that's already there. Um, it looks organic, but inside this floor plan there is a structure. It is made out of concrete and it sits on very specific points that we could use. Um, and so in a way it's like a, a geological structure that holds up the building. Um, we were inspired by these landscapes of discovery where uh, forms are hollowed out, they're porous, um, you, you feel beckoned, you want to go explore. Um, and to study this, we worked with blocks of ice, um, hollowing it out. We used digital tools, of course, uh, but it was really about trying to find this language that could help people uh, want to explore. So here you can see another model. You can see the, the minimal uh, places we could land the structure down. So it's very much um, working hand in hand with our structural engineers. Um, and to build it without using formwork um, was, the, was the goal, because we didn't want to build all this formwork, pour the concrete in, and then tear it all down. And um, So it's really done with this method of shotcrete, so um, building it out of, of um, rebar and shooting the concrete into it. 
Um, you can see these, this is during construction, um, how the shot creek started at the top and then we pulled that out and worked our way down So because it's creating kind of like an arch. And you can see this connection to the outdoors. It was really interesting to work in this kind of organic way, uh, using everything that we could that was there and, and really making people feel um, empowered to study nature in the way that they want. Um, there's some uh, spaces where the collections inside the building were revealed 100%. They were, they were already there, but just no one could see into these massive collections. There's something like 18 classrooms in this building. There's a theater, um, there's a library, um, and it's really bringing a lot of these hidden functions out to the public. My favorite is really the um, insect exhibit. They've never been able to show insects before. So um, by enlarging some of the insect um, exhibits with our exhibit designer or, or doing something as technically challenging as, as having leafcutter ants um, living and working in the, um, in the building. It's, it's really like a different level of understanding and appreciating nature. Um, of course, it's a building that connects with and has dialogue with the buildings around it, um, but mainly it's, it's, it's a departure in terms of how we understand nature and how we come to appreciate it. Um, this is the exterior of the building um, as it comes to the park. And finally, just that the building should always make you connect to something larger, um, in this case, the grid of Manhattan, um, and even larger than that, it lines up with um, the street grid so that people can experience and this Manhattan Henge, which is a, a, a planetary event. So what I, what I love most um, about the, these projects is how people are becoming engaged with each other in these events and then by extension with their environment. So it's repairing these relationships and bringing people closer together. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.